Good evening everyone. Welcome to another edition of Going Deeper and this is our last one before Christmas and we're going to be finishing the series in worship and we're going to be in Luke chapter 1 tonight. Um, potentially this is the last uh, of these recordings I'm going to do but if you would like me to continue please let me know and we'll consider a new subject for the new year. Luke 1 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who has, was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, or I am the handmaiden of the Lord, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child who will, you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil her promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and to his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Tonight is a celebration of the event when the angel Gabriel came to Mary. And what we see is Mary just saying, I will worship, I will be available to God with all I am. Picture the scene, a poor home in the north of the country, in occupied territories with Romans coming and going past their door constantly. And Mary, like any other Jewish girl, is preparing for married life. Often they were married around the age of 15. Children, cooking, cleaning, all of this was in front of her. And up until this point, her life had probably been very ordinary. But suddenly, a huge, spectacular being appears in her room and calls her highly favoured of the Lord. No wonder she is troubled. And he tells her that she will give birth to a king, the promised Messiah, the Son of God. How would you react if an angel turned up in your bedroom one night and gave such revelation to you? That, that you would bring forth somebody who would be king of the country and sort out all its problems. We can learn a lot from Mary's response about worship. Remember, I said previously, worship is not simply what we sing on a Sunday morning, how much we pray, or what instrument we play. Worship is about making ourselves available to God. True worship is a response to God. It's laying ourselves on the altar. It's making ourselves available for him to do whatever he wants to do in us and through us. Worship is giving out all to God and expecting nothing in return. So there's two possible responses, or two responses, sorry, that Mary gives. The first question she asks the angel is, how can these things be? This is her response to the angel Gabriel, and it's a normal and reasonable response from a good Jewish girl. 
Why me? She's asking. I'm not important. Each, and each one of us might respond to God in that way. But God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God doesn't choose us because we're worthy, but because he wants to, because he chooses to. And then the second part of that is, how is this going to happen? And again, it's a very reasonable question. And when God gives us a task to do, of all places are calling on our life, it's only normal that we might want to ask some of the mechanics of how it's going to be achieved. And what's the response of the angel Gabriel? The Holy Spirit. Anything we achieve for God can only be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. If we think we can do it because of our abilities or our gifts, it's time to think again. This is no better than Cain's offering when he brought the works of his own hands to God. Worship that pleases God is worship that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Previously, we, we were reminded that we worship in spirit and in truth. And worship needs to be empowered by the Spirit if it's to be acceptable to, but acceptable to God. And service needs to be empowered by the Spirit if it's to be effective for God. Do you want your worship and your service to go higher? Open yourself up to the Spirit of God. And this is not a once in a lifetime fill in, but a constant thing. As Paul says in uh, Ephesians 5.18, go on being filled with the Spirit. It's not enough to say I was filled with the Spirit 20, 30, 40 years ago, or even that I was filled last week. We need to constantly be topped up, being filled with the Spirit. All of us get empty through life, and we need to be coming constantly to be refilled. If, um, if we want our worship and our service to be effective, it's got to be by the anointing and the enabling and by the filling of the Holy Spirit. And if you haven't been filled with the Spirit, ask somebody to pray for you for exactly that. And so the response comes from, from the angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And that's the same promise that Jesus gave to the early church and for all believe, believers. Open up to the Holy Spirit and receive all that God has for you. Secondly, how can these things be? Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. That's her response. Once she's heard the, how can this thing be? By the Holy Spirit, let's just do it, Lord. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be to me, just as you say, as it says in the message version. Mary, in hearing the response from God, submits completely to the will of God. And she does so even though she knows that there may be consequences. She might be facing ostracism and censure by the community. She might be suffering from loss of a husband. Once she's had a baby, there will be no husband for her. And she's facing being a teenage mother with no benefits, no housing, no home for unmarried mothers. And she has the prospect of bringing up a child with no support from family. Sometimes when we surrender to the will of God, Things in our circumstances may actually get worse. It may require sacrifice. It may require us to give things up. When Jesus came to the rich young ruler and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said these words, would you be made complete? Do you really want to go all the way? Do you want to be just another religious person or do you really want to be a disciple? Well, the answer is surrender everything. Give up all you have, sell what you have, and come follow me. Maybe giving up a relationship with an unbeliever because that's stopping you fulfilling the purpose of God. It may be secret sin, which is not surrendered to God. It may be selfish ambition as opposed to God's destiny for you. Many things from, can keep us from fulfilling the, the will and for, from, for, for fulfilling all that God has for us. But true worship is putting God in first place in our lives and allowing nothing to get in the way of that. We sing, Lord, I offer up my life in spirit and in truth. But do we really do that? As a res final response of offering ourselves totally for, to God, we have recorded for us one of the most magnificent songs of praise ever written, and certainly one of the most magnificent songs in scripture, Mary's Magnificat. And as we surrender ourselves to God, as she did, so worship will flow out of us. It will not be able to stop. As I finish, I just want to read the words of that song that I uh, referred to earlier. I will offer up my life in spirit and in truth, pouring out the oil of love 
as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part. Lord, receive this sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give, what can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Saviour, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? For my words cannot tell, not even in part, of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath, for you paid the great cost, giving up your life to death, even death on a cross. You took all my shame away, there defeated my sin, opened up the gates of heaven, and have beckoned me in. Jesus, what can I give, what can I bring? To so faithful a friend, to so loving a king, Saviour, what can be said, what can be sung, as a praise of your name for the things you have done? And my words cannot tell, not even in part, of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. Father, receive our praise and worship, and be with each one of us as we go about our daily business during this season. Amen. God bless. <laughs>